Okay, well, it's good to see all of you on this cold morning. Uh, I asked Terry what the temperature was so I could dress accordingly. And he said, don't, don't say anything. And he said, uh, 27. And I said, 27. <laughs> But I think um, that was the wind chill factor. The wind is blowing a bit. Um, but I think it's like 36, so that's pretty, pretty cold. Mm -hmm. uh, especially from last week, it was 80. So it's kind of interesting weather. Right? So um, there is a lot going on at church today. We are, um, in, besides being in Advent, we are... Um, uh, reluctantly saying uh, goodbye to Tim and Shannon because they're moving to Kentucky. We don't know why they're going to do it. We do know why they're going to do it. <laughs> we, we think they shouldn't, but anyway. Like I said last night, we may, you know, come back with our tail between our legs. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. I'm not, I'm not going to be looking for that. So, anyway. <laughs> Diane, how are you feeling? Sore. No. Sore, you're still sore, yeah. but you didn't break anything. No. So I what? Need to get cord to those shots too. Is that what you hurt your arm? Yeah. Wow. And we're glad Colin's back. He was in the hospital a bit, and uh, we're glad he's back, uh, minus his kidney stones. And uh, you don't bring them with you; just leave them in the. <laughs> so. Uh, and anyway, we're glad glad he's back. So um, today, um, the story, the text in the sermon is going to be, I mean, it's from Mark and um, the Advent text, and it's about John the Baptist uh, preaching in the wilderness and all the people going out to hear John preach. But the story I'm going to tell is about Ruth. How many of you know the story of Ruth? A few. You know the story of Ruth, you know the story of Ruth. Okay, so it's a well-known story, um, and I'm not going to tell it because uh, I'm going to tell it in church, but it is about a woman and her mother-in-law. Now, I think one of the interesting things about this story is it is often told, uh, used at weddings, which is kind of odd that you would use a story about a mother-in-law at a wedding, right? And I don't think, it just has some beautiful language to it, and I think that's why they use it, and they don't think about, it's kind of odd to use a story about a mother-in-law at a wedding. But anyway, uh, but you may have heard it told at a, at a wedding before. But it is a lovely story. Today is the Sunday of Peace, uh, which seems a little ironic since uh, there's not a lot of that going around, uh, especially around the world. And... Uh, it just uh, seems like every day there are more atrocities related to one or the other wars that are going on right now. So I hadn't thought about it this way, but they were talking about President Biden is a wartime president. And I thought, because I always think that's more when we're in the war, I guess, and we are kind of in the war, but um, because we're trying to figure out how to help in the best possible way, but he is a... Uh, War, wartime president, so as if there's not enough to do, um, that goes on top of the, the work of the... And I heard that there was another conflict going on in Bajaj, too, against the attack on the uh, U.S. Embassy. Oh, really? So there's another conflict really? going on there. Uh-huh. So, um, it's just, it just crazy. It's just uh, one, one thing starts and something else starts right. and something else starts. It just, right. it just quickly down. The, it's just yeah. crazy. That is kind of true. Yeah, they either, well, it happened a few weeks, uh, a few days ago, but there was no damage to the U.S. Embassy, but there were a, a array of rockets being shot um, toward the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. Uh -huh. So, you know, I have to read more into that, but it, 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 they said it's still kind of related to the Hamas Israel. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, it, it, it's crazy. Mm, that's all yeah. interesting, isn't it? Well, um, we are, um, yes, the, you're right. It's like one thing kind of seems to, it's not over, but it's a little calmer, but then something yeah, else pops, pops up. So anyway, 
welcome to you guys. We're glad you're glad you're back today. And um, on this cold, cold day. And um, so, like I said, we're, uh, the story of Ruth is the story I'm going to tell. But the scripture is about John the Baptist. So, what do you know about John the Baptist? Anybody? You, I know if you've been in church, it was okay. That's right, Diane. It's Jesus' cousin. John the Baptist was a cousin of Jesus. His mother was, anybody know his mother's name? You get extra points for mother's name. Elizabeth. And if you remember, Mary goes, when Mary finds out she's pregnant, she goes to see Elizabeth and talk to her. You remember that? Oh, yeah. And um, uh, because Elizabeth's also pregnant, but Elizabeth's much older than Mary. All right, what else do you know about John the Baptist? Tim? I just, when I picture John the Baptist, I just picture this big guy coming out of the the woods because he, you know, he was out in the woods eating locusts and honey and right. doing whatever he was doing. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> that's what I think of. John, he, he baptized Jesus. He did. Saying. He did baptize Jesus. John the Baptist, uh, if there was ever a person that uh, was comfortable with who he was and didn't worry about what anybody said about him, I think it would have been John the Baptist because he kind of. Uh, marched to his own drummer. He was, you know, we hear about him eating locusts and honey and uh, wearing furry, like uh, from animals, skins. And uh, he did stay out in the wilderness a lot. So he was an interesting kind of guy. But uh, why would you think, so he's out in the wilderness <clears throat> and the people are coming from the city and the scripture says that a lot of people went. They were kind of coming in. Throngs of people were coming. Why in the world do you think they would go out there to hear John the Baptist? Anybody? Maybe they thought he was the Messiah. Oh, that's a good thought. They may have thought he was the Messiah. Yeah, I think some people ask him about that. You know. well, why is his name John the Baptist? Well, it's really not John the Baptist in the Bible. It says John. And I think he got that name because he baptized, baptizer. And so people say that. But when I was growing up, I thought, oh my gosh, he was, he was from the same church, the ch same denomination. <laughs> when I was a little girl, and I'd hear about John the Baptist, and I'd go, oh. but it's not, it's not there. And, uh, you know, it, we should do a study sometime all the things that we say are in the Bible that really aren't in the Bible. <laughs> that we think are in the Bible that really aren't in the Bible. And uh, because there's quite a few things that um, that are, uh, we churches are built on these kinds of theologies and really there's not much in the Bible about it. So, um, it, you know, it's like we've talked about when we did the clobber passages, um, if, if, if this was such a burning issue, why would Jesus have not addressed it? Why would Jesus have not said something about it? And uh, because Jesus said a lot about money, a lot about divorce, a lot about a lot of things, but nothing about, uh, about what we call LGBTQ issues today. Um, I just find that very odd um, that if, if that was a big problem but we have made that like a big problem we've made it I, I've heard people say this I've had them say this to me many times that's the line in the sand I can't go across that's the line and it's like how did that become the line I mean Jesus didn't say that was the line I mean why is that the line? And I think that is born out of fear. You know, they're afraid. And they don't know what to do with all this and change and all these things. And it's like, uh, when I was younger in the church, um, like, the big deal was, was being divorced. And, like, a divorced person couldn't teach Sunday school. A divorced person couldn't do, you know, do this or be a vegan or do these things. Um, and now, 
nobody even blinks an eye, right? I mean, it's like, it's very much a part of our culture and people don't even, that's... It's like, how many times have you been divorced? Yeah, that's right. Mm. If you've been divorced more than five times, you can't be. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. That's true. And so. Um, but I get it. I get the, the when you talk about divorce. I think you have to understand the root cause of the divorce. Sure. Well, you know, I don't, I don't think people really want divorce. Sometimes divorce happens for right. circumstances that. For their own safety, or you know, I mean, there's different reasons why people divorce. Right. But then there are some people I believe that do divorce for the wrong reason. Well, that's you know? true. That's yeah. true. But yes, there are certainly cases where, like in situations of abuse, and exactly. um, there are many situations where right. divorce is the best, the best answer. And the other thing I always say is, you know. Um, they will say, well, God instituted, uh, Jesus instituted marriage and blah, blah, blah. Well, but all marriages are not made in heaven, right? Yeah. All marriages are not made, even the divorce is not only not for the right reason, the marriage often wasn't for the right reason. Mm -hmm. I had this really good friend in California, and um, <clears throat> she was, um, she was, they had children our children's age, and we were talking about one time uh, she met her husband because she worked for American Airlines and she was from Boston. And um, he, you remember, you don't remember this, but there was a time when there were a lot of hijackings on planes and so they put federal marshals in the airports and in on planes. And so her husband was a federal marshal and she said he was a federal marshal and he was working at the airport and <clears throat> we would all go out um, after work and he was a good dancer and we enjoyed dancing and they got married <laughs> and he was a really nice guy uh, but it ended up that <clears throat> their children were what the thing that held them together the dancing didn't last a long time and so um, I'm just saying people marry for odd reasons and um, and sometimes it's not it's not a good reason to get married. Um, but I did a funeral last week, and the couple, uh, they had been married. He was 90 years old. The, the woman had died 10 years ago. And um, when she died, they had been married 61 years. And um, they met when he was 18 and she was 15. And uh, when he saw her, he said, she's the woman I'm gonna marry. And three weeks later, they were married. And um, they stayed married all that time. So isn't that interesting? So time is not always the, uh, the indicator of a good marriage. But, uh, and he, I think till his dying day, um, the, the, his daughters talked about how he just adored their mother, you know, that he would do anything she wanted, not because he felt like he had to, but because he wanted to, because he loved her so much. And um, it was a great, great love story. So time is not always an indicator, but people do marry for interesting reasons, and then, um, so you're not very surprised when it does break up, because, you know, sometimes I'm surprised when marriages do last, uh, unfortunately. I will tell you just an interesting little bit of trivia that has nothing to do with what we're talking about except it is about marriage. That most of the people that I marry these days met online. Mm. Almost everybody. And really, it depends on which uh, site they met on, but um, a lot of times, uh, you know, some of those um, websites you have to answer questions and about it yourself and tell about yourself, and um, I've had people when we do premarital counseling and we'll talk and they'll say, you know, those questions made me think about things about myself I'd never really thought about. And I find that the couples that do fill out all those questionnaires and all those things often know more about each other than a couple that met at the airport or at a bar or something you know, that these couples really do know more because they've filled out all those questionnaires and about themselves and then they share them. And um, so they, I mean, you'd be surprised. Um, people will come to get married 
And um, when we, like I, I usually do three sessions of premarital counseling and I'll say, so have you talked about money? Well, no, not really. Well, have you talked about uh, if you wanna have children? No, we haven't. And one of them will say, I really don't want children. The other one says, well, I wanted three. And you're like, whoa, there could be some problems there. So I'm just saying you'll be surprised at what people never talk about before they get married. And then they get married and they're surprised. So My father told my husband um, he wants 12 children. Oh. <laughs> and he just looked at me and said, I mean, you're Catholic. How many children do you want? Thank goodness. You, you, you just, just one thing after another, my husband, just freaking him out. His freaking out, 12 children, that would be a lot. Woo! Okay, so uh, back to John the Baptist. What else do you know about John the Baptist? Anybody? He was beheaded, I know that much. He was, he was. Do you remember the circumstances of that? She said he was beheaded. And he was beheaded. The story's told in the Bible. Do you remember what anything about that? It was the, the request of, I forget the king's name, but it was Salome uh -huh. that uh, had danced for the king. Uh -huh. And he, he give, would give her anything. Uh -huh. And that was her request. And do you remember how his head, what they did with his head? Put it on a silver platter. Put it on a silver platter. Presented, no, presented on a platter. Why was she... I don't remember why she was mad. Why did she want him? Well, and I'm trying to remember that story, too, because she requested that when she was told she could have whatever she wanted. Yeah. And I'm trying to remember her connection, why she picked. I think that her mother told her to do it. Because John spoke against her adultery. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and didn't it come from her mother? He didn't want to <clears throat> do anything against John because he knew he was a religious right. man. But when the daughter yeah. pleased him and he was granted the, the request, that's what I, the I think you're right. Yeah. I think it had to do, I mean, she didn't do it on her own. Somebody, she was told to do it. Yeah, I think you're right. And so, um, so that's the way, the way he died. And I will have to say this about John. You know, I, I think he was one of those people that didn't have an unexpressed thought. If he thought it, you were gonna know about it. And if he thought you should do X, you were, and this is the way the scripture kind of describes him that he was preaching to people saying, um, repent, you know, you need to repent. And um, I think this is so interesting. I've told you this before a little bit, but so when I read different commentaries about a scripture, it always tickles me about, it's so subjective. I mean, you know, somebody will say, this I read this week. Why do they say, people say that John the Baptist was shouting? There's nowhere in scripture it says he shouted. Maybe he spoke in a soft voice. Maybe. Well, then the next commentator said he was in the wilderness shouting this news to everybody. And um, who knows? Anyway. Yeah, deep, do what? It could be the deep, loud voice. Yeah, I mean, who knows? But um, I've always thought that he was probably out there, you know, speaking in a very strong voice and repent, you know, for the time is at hand. And, uh, but, some people think some people are shouting when you're actually just talking. Well, that's true. That's true, Diane. You've got a point there. So, um, but anyway, so we're going to talk a little bit about John, and then we're going to talk a lot about Luke. So, so I'm just a curious question. You may not know the answer, but you may do it. I'm just curious. How did John end up being the person to baptize? I've always wondered, how did he get that privilege? Well, Jesus said, I've come that you for you to baptize me. And John said, oh, no, I'm not worthy to baptize you. And okay, Jesus said, yeah, I remember that now. yeah, I want you to baptize me. But hadn't he been baptizing prior to that? Oh, oh yeah, I think he'd been. Yeah, he was, that's what I'm saying. How did that even get started? Because John is around with who he was. Well, and that's a good question because <clears throat> baptism really wasn't Right. That wasn't the way, you know, a part of the Jewish, exactly the Jewish faith. So that, that is a good question, that how did he start saying, I think it probably came about because of his message. 
you know, his message. Because he knew the Messiah. He knew who, who the Messiah was before anybody else knew, right? Uh, I, who know, I don't know exactly when he knew that Jesus was the Messiah. I'm not sure, you know, exactly what point. But I think the message was repent, which, you know, repent right. means turn around. Yeah. So if you're doing these kinds of things, you need to turn around and quit doing them. And maybe the idea of baptism came from, you know, we say you're, um, uh, you know, you go down into the water and you're raised in newness of life. Right. And so maybe John decided that that was going to be the way to help people feel like they really had made a, a change. Uh, help for feel we can't face it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah that, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah that's exactly right. Yeah. So, have any of you been to the Jordan River? Anybody? I want to. Yeah. Uh. It's, it's rather unimpressive, <laughs> wouldn't you say? And, you know, when I was younger and I'd hear about Jesus going to John to baptize him, you know, I would envision this beautiful river and, you know, it's real muddy. And, uh, hey, come on in. It's muddy and it's... Um, it's not real pretty, you know, it's just, it, and it's not real big. At least the part I saw wasn't really big. And um, it was not how I had envisioned it at all. Is it a crocodile? I don't know about crocodiles, I don't think so. I don't think I heard anything. Nobody said don't go down in the river because you may get your leg bent off. So, no, I don't think so, but it's just how we envision these things that in our life, that um, we hear about in the Bible over and over and over, and so we form a picture of what it looks like. And um, I had just always, um, the same with the Sea of Galilee. I was surprised by the Sea of Galilee. I actually thought it was bigger than I had imagined. Some of the people in my group thought it was smaller than they had imagined. But it's pretty big. Uh, but um, it just wasn't how I had envisioned it. And the Dead Sea, uh, it was pretty much like I envisioned it. <laughs> and the Dead Sea is the one that's very salty. Isn't it's it? very yeah. salty. Yeah. And if you get in it and you lean back, you won't go under the water. You just lean back and you float yeah. like this. Now, don't go under because salty, you know, probably hurt your eyes. But you can just lean back, float around. And people think in the, uh, the people that live there, you know, think it's all very medicinal. The, the sand is black, and you'll see people out there, and they're just putting that, you know, on their skin because it's supposed to be have minerals and all kinds of stuff in it. Oh yeah. And but it's war. It was warm. The water was warm, and um, the sand was hot, hot, hot. And um, you really have to have shoes to walk on it because it. And um, but anyway, it was a nice, uh, I mean, it was interesting, but it was kind of what I thought it would look like. So, um, but yeah, not much lives in it, no alligators there. Yes. So they weren't Jesus and John the Baptist cousins? They were, that's what Diane said. Yeah, 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 yeah. they were cousins. Yeah, Elizabeth, you remember Mary at the, went to visit Elizabeth? Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, they were cousins, so uh, they were related. And, and might have, uh, John might have known of Jesus' ministry yeah. and say, I'm going to work. He could. He could have. Some of those things we're not told. You know, we don't really know, know exactly. It, we're not given all the little details of, of what happened. Now, Jerry, you're right in the Bible. We don't know that happened. That's exactly right. That, all right, so one of the things I want to talk to you about just for a second You've got your Bible open back there. Look up and see um, if it says, what was that we were just talking about? Not about that, but um, about John. Um, no, I don't think, I can't remember what I was going to say. If I, if I think of it, I'll tell you. But, so we're in the, in the uh, book of Mark, the Gospel of Mark. You know, how many Gospels are there? Four. 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 And you know what they are? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John's is real different, right? It's, it's just kind of different. A lot of Matthew and Luke sound pretty similar. Mark is kind of interesting because it's the shortest, probably the oldest, 
And it is um, like there's no story about Jesus' birth. There's nothing that says Jesus was born. He starts out with, you know, the baptism and all that. But in the book of Luke, it talked about the story of Jesus' yeah. birth. Matthew, but not in Mark. Matthew and Luke talked right. about it. Yeah, right. but, but Mark gave it. Yeah, right. I think you're right about that. And if you remember last week when I talked about uh, Rahab, and I said she's in the genealogy because in, like, Matthew lists, these the, it was blah, 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 blah than Jesus. You know, he kind of gives the genealogy of Jesus, the family, his relations, his relatives. And just like you might do, well, my, my mother was, my grandmother was, my great-grandmother was. And that's what I was telling you last week when we talked about Rahab. There's some very interesting people in the genealogy of Jesus. And so today we're going to talk about another one. It's very interesting how she got into the gospel of Jesus, I mean, the genealogy of Jesus. And so Rahab, who was a prostitute, um, isn't it interesting? You know, the people that are in Jesus' genealogy and uh, that is relatives. You know, we all say we have some black sheep in our family, but, you know, but so he did too. But the other thing I want to talk to you about about Mark is, as I said, it's the shortest. And um, I think I've talked to you about this before, is that uh, they always talk about Mark being in a hurry because he uses words like quickly, immediately, all these words that indicate, you know, he ran, he, you know, it's moving. And um, so that's kind of interesting, except the, uh, but another thing about Mark is he often, uh, I said a lot of things aren't in the Bible, he often mentions some things in the Bible that nobody else mentions. I mean, he mentions things and writes about them in the Bible, but like um, he'll make a comment. Um, uh, the I'm just throwing something out. This is not exactly right, but like say the mother of uh, Peter who uh, needed healing was on a bed with blue linens, or you know stuff like that. Some details that other people don't mention, which is interesting in light of the fact that he is so quick and you know, leaves out parts and left out. And um, he says, this is the, uh, when the book starts, the beginning of the story of Jesus. And so for whatever reason, he does not begin with the, the birth, you know, the telling the story. He begins in a different place. And so it's a real short little book. Um, just sometimes sit down and just read it. And just read for the, you know, pay attention to the, those words that are always, you know, he's in a hurry, and uh, he, he's going to do this, and he's going to do that quickly, 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 and um, when you read it, you almost have this sense of, you know, you want him to slow down a little bit, and... Uh, yeah, it was interesting when you were talking about the genealogy of Jesus, you know, I could talk about that in Luke, uh, yeah. and it's just interesting of how much has changed as you go through genealogy all the way up to when Jesus was born. Mm -hmm. How many people were before him? Yeah. Which I found that very interesting because it was a, it's a lot of people before him. So it goes all the way down to, to Adam, yeah. you know, even where it's it kind of God actually, because he's the one that started. Well, you know, and it's just interesting to see how many people that he was a, a, a descendant of, yeah. I guess you could tell you. Yeah, so and it, today, it kind of me, right, so. uh, pay attention because there's going to be an interesting connection today. Uh, that is very interesting to know about. And uh, so pay attention and I'll ask you uh, next week, you can tell me what it is. So that'll be your homework for, uh, for next week is to pay attention about this connection that uh, this connection that uh, in Jesus genealogy. So pay attention and I know she's standing there and everybody's gonna stand and turn around. <laughs> So um, we've been talking about during Advent, I have to leave a little early. <laughs> so I told them last week, I said, when it's time, just stand up and turn around. So they all did. <laughs> and quit. Uh, you see Holly's move to turn off my microphone. <laughs> so um, anyway, we're glad you're here this morning. And um, there's a lot, as I said, going on, a lot of wonderful things. And uh, But pay, uh, pay attention to the stories and... Uh, um, the connections to Jesus. It's, it's quite, quite fascinating. Let's say a prayer. 
God, we give you thanks for the beauty of this day. We th thank you for the crisp, cool air. We thank you for your love, which encircles us each and every day of our lives. We thank you for this church, and we thank you for the opportunity to um, think about the things that you have told us, the things that are important, and the things that we need to, to be doing in this your world. We give you thanks, oh God. Amen. 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 All right. I'll see you in just a minute.